You're listening to the Beyond the Dojo podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Jeremiah. And this is episode 21. 21. 21. So I know you guys might not believe this, but at one point, many moons ago, we were allowed out of our homes and we were able to interact with other karateka in, in these, large groups of and, people. And we used to call these things seminars. Yes. And we or used to. Camps. Or camps. And we would train karate, in, in, in addition to doing many, many other things. Yeah. I know it's hard to believe that we haven't always trained karate over Zoom, but in fact, for centuries, people have trained martial arts in person. Yeah. We are se- social beings. just seems like a thing of the past now, doesn't it? Well, with technology. <laughs> I mean. With, with coronavirus. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't guessed, today's subject is going to be on seminars. We actually intended to talk about this uh, like about a month ago um, after attending uh, Florida Winter Keiko, but we uh, kind of didn't get around to it, and then we talked about other things, and, oh, you know, a global pandemic hit us, and we've been worried about that kind of thing, so we're getting to it today. <laughs> By the way, she means her, been worrying, she's been worrying about it. No, we had things to square away. In our last episode, we talked about like how we were planning on handling the pandemic, so we had to worry about all that stuff and handling our business and all that junk so you know well he says me because i'm the one that had to organize everything but whatever okay he is helping you know teach yep. <sighs> yeah so we're gonna start this off with um a selfish discussion so jeremiah when and where and who taught your first seminar uh god it was in upstate new york um and uh it was the teacher I was training with, Thomas Froble. He he had done it. He was doing a, a seminar across the lake in Burlington, Vermont, and I came along. Mm-hmm. So that was what fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. What'd you guys do? Do you remember? Um, he was known for um, realistic application, um, and at that time, you know, it was pretty way ahead of its time, I believe. Um, and that's what we did. We did that, and we did um. A lot of a lot of partner drills and stuff like that. There wasn't a lot of working against the air at these seminars. There's a lot of partner stuff. It wasn't refining your technique. It was like making it work. Gotcha. If that makes any sense. But that was late eighties, early nineties, and that's kind of the the theme of karate back then. Gotcha. So that was my first. How about yours? Um, I think my first seminar was when I was sixteen. I traveled up um to georgia and trained at an ajk seminar under edmund otis um that was a seminar where i tested for nidan and um i think a lot of what he did was like a slightly more advanced version of um like i don't want to say basics but you know certain groups have like a certain have a a certain perspective Mm. on how karate advances and um this particular group i feel um, looks at it as how do we make what we're doing maybe slightly more complicated or um, like more difficult. Um, it's a little bit different of a thought process versus like, you know, you talk about application that you learned at that seminar. They don't really cover that too much. Um, so it was kind of that kind of thing. Like what you'd see at a lot of these, a lot of seminars where you're just doing kihon, but it's maybe a little bit harder than what you're used to, maybe not what you normally do in your dojo. Um, That is the first seminar where I ever met a hook kick. And by met, I mean with my head. Because Mm. (laughs) the girl that was standing in front of me, we were doing some drill, and she thrust kicked past my head. And I was like, oh, she completely missed. That's weird. (laughs) And then she bent her knee and uh, connected her heel with the back of my head, and I almost fell on the floor. Didn't know that that was a thing at the time, but I know now. So anyway, that was my first seminar. Mine was, um, I mean, in Japan, you always had the prefecture head come through and do your bell tests and stuff like that. Like most JKA things where you, you know, you'd have a seminar in a sense before the bell test. But I didn't really consider those seminars because they they happened so often and regularly with the same guy that I just felt like that was the. Like a regular training? Just a normal training, special Mm -hmm. training, but not like a seminar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I may have. Go ahead. Thomas Froebel's stuff was. I think I was still too young to understand what was going on. I mm. just enjoyed the training. Yeah. Um, the first, like, adult experience would be uh, Pensacola 2011. 
Steve Ubel, and that was probably one of the most impactful seminars. Gotcha. So how about for you? Who was what was the most impactful? Um, well, first I was going to say that uh, with the my first seminar, uh, that was the first time I had ever like traveled without my parents, so it was a really big deal <laughs> going that far. Um, so yeah, so that one was definitely different. But uh, most impactful is actually the same seminar. Um, and for those of you who don't know, that's actually where Jeremiah and I met um, was in 2011. And that was, I think, I think the second year that they had had um, Steve Ubel there. There, yeah. Seminar. The first was 2010. Yeah. Or, yeah. But definitely, that was definitely the most impactful. Um, it was funny because that was actually like the next year. That was when I was 17. So it seems like those two seminars were so far apart. But, you know, I had been exposed to the same karate for a long time. And then, like, the seminars that I went to within that year prior were all just kind of building on some maybe some of the same concepts, even though it was really cool to see new stuff. Um, But um, Steve Sensei just took it to a whole other level, and that definitely completely changed the trajectory of my karate forever on that seminar. So, yeah, that was definitely the most impactful. Yeah. So shout out to Tom Frutiker and all you folks in Pensacola. Yeah, Tom Frutiker and (laughs) Paul Peniel and Randall Hackworth, Coastal Shotokan. Yeah. That was a good group of guys. So we kind of wanted to talk about, like, what seminars are for, what goes on at seminars, and maybe what teachers are looking for out of the, out of the people who are training at seminars and whatever kind of other babble comes along, um, and how people actually perceive seminars, because I know that a lot of people have different perspectives going into them. Yeah. Um, so let's see. How can we structure this? So maybe first thing, um, what do you think Karateka are looking for going into a seminar? I'll, it depends on, on the group of people, you okay. know, uh, I think. Jeremiah's playing with a stool. That's why there's Sorry, lots of noise. I, my lower back's been bothering me and sitting <laughs> in the stool hurts, so i got to stand up and stretch and then sit down. Give him the chair. Um, I think it depends on the group. Some guys go there for a social gathering. Some guys go there to train. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people are getting ready for a Don test or stuff like that, and they, they're really focused on that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, me, personally, not getting ready for Don test or training syllabus kind of stuff. Uh, I always look for innovative ideas, something I've never considered or thought of Mm -hmm. um, that has been backed up by solid explanation and Mm -hmm. reasoning. Mm -hmm. Um, That's always what I'm looking for, no matter what. Even if I think it's a little hokey at the time, Mm -hmm. I'll still spend time looking at it just to see if uh, maybe, (laughs) sounds arrogant, but like maybe I could put a different spin on it or make it it more to where I can understand it better. Yeah. Um, And... You know, that's kind of my motivation. Yeah. You know, um, at first it was just to get to go train with different people. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest attraction is actually what for guys like me who had like, you know, I was running a dojo at the time when I'm down here in Florida by myself, no other Don ranks around Mm -hmm. training in front of a mirror all the time. The opportunity to sit on a floor with 20 other people and and Kiai like we're eight year olds again is well worth it to me. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think a lot of people look at it that way. Is like, you know, you, you you miss training with other people who are your age and rank because you get to the point where, in a lot of cases, there's lots of kids in the dojo and it's hard right. to, to maintain that motivation. And we actually discussed that in the, the episode that we did on motivation is that <clears throat> sometimes people will use seminars as a great motivator for training, like to improve right. your training right. up to that point, almost like you're periodizing your training and, and oh, increasing absolutely. to peak out. Um, I, I agree that uh, it, it is nice to, to listen to different innovators or di- yeah well yeah innovators to listen to different teachers. Yeah. Um, not that I always agree with what everybody says, um, but what is nice is to hear something from someone's perspective. This is kind of messed up. I've discussed this with, you, with Jeremiah before. Um, sometimes we will go and listen to certain teachers, and the sometimes part of half of or the majority of what they're teaching. Personally, I don't agree with, but hearing the way that they say certain things actually solidifies for me what I know to be true. Um, and that's not to say I'm trying to not have an open mind. I'm there to listen and um, learn what I can from whoever has something to offer. Sometimes, even if I disagree with a person, they will say something that's really enlightening and it does, you know, add to what I'm doing. Other times, someone will be teaching something and I don't agree with it at all and I can listen to their reasoning and in my head I'm like okay 
the reason I don't agree is this, this, and this. And it actually helps me to become a better teacher and a better student because I'm able to listen and I don't want to say pick apart, but that's kind of what's happening. Not to be a jerk. I don't dislike the people necessarily. I'm not trying to, I don't, and I don't want to trash talk their teaching, but it is actually a good experience for me because I feel like I can, I can still glean something from that. So, um, and side note, uh, other people, <laughs> we talk about other people's motivation. Like, so yeah, some people get ready for are getting ready for a dawn ranking. Some people want to see old friends. Yeah, um, let's make sure it's clear that the perspective of this uh, conversation is from like a mature dawn ranking adult Kanatika. Oh yeah, yeah. We're yeah. not we're not talking about kids or Q ranks. Um, we're yeah, talking you had about no choice. <laughs> adult, like adult. This is an adult event. You know what I mean? We're adults here. So that being said, you know, being mature martial artist and having the the ability to discern which you believe is correct and incorrect is is vital in this conversation. We are awesome and we can make the rules. No, no I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying we should know the rules enough to, to make the a good, solid um, decision for yourself. Yeah, we're, we're making our decisions and whether or not those are right or wrong, we will see in the long run, but that's kind of the, that's the perspective that we're taking yeah. is that, yeah. you know, we're, we're kind of putting everything, viewing everything through the lens of how we understand karate and if yeah. we agree with it, we take it. If we don't, then we see, you know, how yeah. it enhances we don't, what we know. We don't look at it as that we have all the answers. We look at it as we're looking for more answers. Yeah. And sometimes you learn more by re... by learning more support mm -hmm. to what you're doing and why certain things don't work. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, another... I know that a lot of karate people love to just go party. Yeah. Look, well, dude, yeah. karate people love to party. If you're new to this and you're listening to this podcast, they do. <laughs> yeah. So it's a socializing thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't do that. That's the problem with me. It's like I can't go to a seminar and and, and go to a socializing drinking thing or, or even just to go to have a good time at a, at a a destination point. It's not that's not what seminars are for me. Okay, moving on. Um, so what else did I say at the beginning about what we were gonna talk about? So what a student's perspective is. Oh, and what's like okay, what happens at seminars? So you said that at this first seminar you went to, it was a lot more like, like partner work, like hands on. You're working together or like working on a concept. Um, how how often do you think seminars are structured in that way where it's all like working with a partner? It should be. I mean, yeah. a lot of it should be. Now, well, that's that's a thing too. It depends on what kind of seminar you're going to. Yeah. Let's be real. If you're going to a seminar where a don rank is or Don test is associated with it through your organization, there's going to be a lot of air work. There's going to be a lot of like fundamental work because that seminar is geared towards solidifying the stylization or standard of their organization. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, then you go to some sort or, um, seminars where it's, it's a little bit more like challenging your thought process. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even if it's the same sensei, he, he, he provides the information in such a way that it's thought provoking. Yeah. And then you got some that are just, you know, it's a camp. Yeah. And you're doing a, a, a tremendous workout. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the, the categories I see seminars in. Yeah. Um, Not going to lie. I have like, I, I'm, this is obviously really odd since I do all kinds of social things, but I have a really hard time with socializing with people that I don't know. Yeah. And um, doing partner work is like, uh, really, really hard for me. I mean, it, it is like, it's a, it's a battle every single seminar for me to be like, okay, turn around, find a partner. And I like, I push past it and I talk to people, but like, if you're a little introverted or you have a pro like issues with social stuff like that, it is so hard to, <laughs> to connect with people and to be able to work with them. But it's so valuable because you learn to, you know, eat your ego and listen to people's insight even if you don't agree with them you learn to listen and and take some feedback from them so you know it's definitely worth it in the end but it's definitely really hard at the same mm -hmm. time yeah yeah I don't, not for me i mean for me it's I, I get two two kinds of or maybe even three kinds of people that want to train with me someone that wants to hit me because i'm big okay and they want to like really try to you know see if it really works mm -hmm. kind of thing um 
someone who doesn't really want to train. They mm-hmm. just want to talk. Yeah. You know, and that, that kind of bothers me sometimes because it's like sometimes you have conversations because it's part of the training and sometimes you're conversating because you don't want to train. Yeah, I've seen that and, a lot. And that kind of irritates me. Yeah. Um, and the third one, and it happens rarely, is you, you, you find someone that trains with you who is motivated to get better. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, understands that sometimes you got to push the edge. Mm-hmm. But has, I mean, the right etiquette about doing it, you know? Yeah. That, I truly believe that karate has an etiquette, and you have to follow it when you're doing partner work mm-hmm. so that everybody understands it's, it's a mutual giving. Mm-hmm. Uke gives of the body, Nage gives of the technique, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So yeah. to me, it's inspiring to have those kind of, to have those opportunities to train with different people Mm -hmm. but it's the cherry on top when i get to have a good training partner someone who really is motivated to train and improve themselves yeah i think the hard thing for me too is like i agree with those three except the different one for me is nobody wants to hit me because i'm small um a lot of women have issue with guys or other women or people who are more advanced or older they kind of want to tell you what to do the whole time and i'm and i i'm respectful and i listen and i and i i want to have like I said, input from other people, but sometimes it's a little over the top. So that makes seminars hard sometimes is whenever you're partnered up with someone and it's like, dude, you're sitting here giving me a correction or trying to get me to do something. And that's literally not what the instructor wants us to do at all. <laughs> that is <laughs> yeah, extremely I think, frustrating. I think one of the rudest things you could do is show up at a seminar and do your own thing. Yeah. I mean, you paid a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, $200 to learn something this weekend mm-hmm. and you show up and do the your own thing. You don't even try the drills or stay within the realm. That is the rudest thing and the most arrogant thing I've ever seen anybody do. Well, let's kind of switch subjects for a second because this is a big part of how the teacher, I mean, you have to remember the teacher who's there is a person and they have feelings too and they right. also have passion for what they're doing. They're teaching for a purpose and they have right. a lot of knowledge. There's a reason that they were asked to come teach, whether right. or not you like it. Like, you know, we don't always agree with what someone's teaching. We're still gonna try what they're teaching. Right, if I'm gonna pay the money to go there, yeah, I'm gonna take and have that flavor of karate for that weekend. Yeah. Because I'm not wasting my money. Yeah. As simple as that. I'm not gonna waste my time or money if I'm not gonna even try. Yeah. I hate to say it, guys, and, and a bunch of you are, are real good friends, but you ain't worth that kind of money to hang out with. Sorry. <laughs> we can just, you know, we can set hit up you a up date on or social something. media. We can we can hang out with y'all a little bit, you know, a different way. That kind of thing to me is just is pointless. Yeah, just to go and do whatever yeah, you want. It's and... so egotistical. Oh yeah, well, God. you know, the the thing is that some people are not there to just hang out with people. Like some people are deliberately there to show themselves off. I have right. I have watched someone I watched someone that I had never heard of before go around and try to correct people at a seminar and they went up to the instructor and tried to sell themselves to the instructor like they were better than him, that they knew more than him or that they were teaching topics that were similar to this this teacher. It's just it's the arrogance is just unreal. I mean, yeah. they <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. go to a seminar, just go there to learn something or at yeah. least try. Don't feel like you have to show off because, honestly, nobody really gives a crap. To be, right. you know, I don't know. Anybody really cares. And really, think about it. You're, you're trying to show off to a bunch of people that don't, that's doing karate maybe longer than you have or right. even about the same amount of time. Either right. way, mm-hmm. um, I hate to tell you, real recognizes real. So when someone's doing karate and someone tries to showboat like that, it's so easy to see. Yeah. You're embarrassing yourself. Just kind of humble yourself. You know? And that's and that's from a student's perspective. But, like, we've talked to instructors who have tried to teach seminars. And, right. like, or you can watch them. Like, if you know them personally, you can watch their eyes. And you can watch them watch people who are showboating. And they will sometimes, like, use them as an uke to maybe put them in their place. That's always really funny. Mm. Or they will stop the class and like they won't call them out directly necessarily yeah, but, but they'll, they'll be like hey this point. is it this is not correct which that's good too sometimes i do wish they would call them out directly i have heard of in- instances where that happens and it is really funny but you know kind of deserve it if you're being an arrogant jerk yeah no, it all depends on the, th- the type of teachers teaching the seminar also yeah if you're someone who's pretty bold and confident and you know you're going to say whatever you want to say yeah, as a teacher, you, know, you mean? You know, what? As an instructor. At a as the instructor. Yeah, yeah. You're going to say whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, I just feel bad for the guys that are like, you know what? You're an idiot. I don't really care. Yeah. Because those guys, you know, let's, be fa- let's face it. Those are more pe- better people to hang out with and, and be part of. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to have to go to a seminar that is ran by a jerk because. Yeah. It's the only. It provides a better learning. That, you know. Well, the 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 conundrum atmosphere. the conundrum that they may be facing though is if they're watching someone act like that is 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 this student's actions going to put someone else at risk? Are right. they going to hurt somebody else because they refuse to listen to the drill, especially if it's a partner drill right. where someone could be really at risk? Right. Well, I'll say this. I've personally experienced uh, coaching from some instructors that were teaching the seminars. And when they, when I would be partner up with guys that they felt like were showboating or whatever, um, I hate to say it, but they would coach me on their weakness of that particular technique. Mm-hmm. Not, not the technique itself, but that person's technique. Yeah, so like saying oh, this person is, is doing their attack incorrectly for the drill. or Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then they'll be like, but you do it this way, you can handle it this way and give you coaching on, you know, how to handle that, that guy's horrible attack. Yeah. In a sense, you know, but even more to the point where they would point out targets that were like, oh, the floating ribs always open. Oh, mm-hmm. he leads with his chin. Mm-hmm. The, you know, just a lot of craziness where it's like, I sometimes felt like the teacher just wanted me to hit that guy. Yeah. You know, I don't, I didn't act on it, obviously, but at the same time, it's just like, I wonder what they're really thinking. Like, when yeah. they point out the targets, like, I yeah. could break that bone, I could snap that jaw, you know, that kind of thing. It's just, I don't know. That That is, a, it's pretty funny to I, see uh, I, I, instructors that are yeah. that, are that um, quick-witted, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time dealing with a nine-year-old that's a jerk in my class. I couldn't imagine an adult being that way. Yeah. That that would just blow my mind. But anyway, let's go on beyond. Let's get beyond the negative of a seminar. Let's go back to the positive. Yeah, there's plenty because there's plenty of positives there. Yeah. Um. So, so uh, we talked about people kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. But what the instructors that we've talked to, what they want to see is that you are doing the specific thing that they ask. Yeah. Um. So trying what they're trying to teach. Just try. Yeah, and and not even um. Not even in some cases, not even just trying what they're teaching, but trying it in the way that they're asking you to do it. So maybe they're telling you, "Hey, slow down and right. kind of break this apart and do it in this way." Right. Um, you know. Well, just be a coachable kid. Yeah. You know, Keep. if someone, if you're going to go there and you're gonna have, you're gonna go to a seminar, just be a coachable kid. Listen to what they got to say. Try it. If you, I mean, honestly, we all know if you don't practice whatever you learn that weekend for the next three weeks, it ain't gonna stay in your head. Yeah. You won't pick it up anyway. So it's not like it's going to ruin your karate long term. Yeah. Just do it. And if you don't like it, don't continue it. You know, one tip is um, you could take notes. Some people are not note takers. Um, but if you go to a seminar, it's not even that hard of a work day. And I'm like yawning over here. <laughs> okay. Um, if you take notes on what's going on in the seminar, once again, even if you don't, agree with everything even if long term it's not something that you end up implementing if you take notes on everything you can at least try the drills that they have taught um you can take notes of the points that they're making um those are always nice because then you have some things not only to try with your own students or or just something to try within your own training or it's ideas to ponder on because there are some teachers that are so insightful that they will share something with you and it doesn't make sense to you until months years later yeah i mean because because it's it's just there's so much in what they're trying to get across and i feel like um you know that that first seminar we talked about our most impactful seminar was with steve sensei and i took notes on that seminar and there is stuff stuff that i could look at now go back and look and like back then i had no clue what it was he was getting at yeah, yeah I had totally. no clue um, the points that he was trying to make or how that was going to apply to my karate or right. whatever but there was a foundation missing that you know yeah. that was kind of making that link yeah. miss but, missing but that's, link that's whatever. the thing that's the thing too is like it all, it all depends on your mindset right yeah it all depends on that and I wonder what the mindset I know I know from talking well I just want to say this. The best way to take advantage of a seminar is to create a relationship with the teacher that you like, that you understand their perspective and the way they, their path in a sense. Yeah. If there's no reason to go to a seminar over and over again with the same teacher, if you're not going to follow up and, yeah. and truly, you know, follow their path. I mean, let's, let's be real. If you're searching for a teacher, then do it. Yeah. It might, it might not be somebody else's right path, but it's yours. Yeah. And I think that's the probably one of the greatest fails that you see nowadays is that they all want to go to a, a Scott Langley, Rick Hotton, Steve Wubble kind of seminar, mm-hmm. right? But 
they don't follow a lot of people don't follow it up and, and try to continue the relationship yeah and well I not just, even the relationship but just continuing to try to improve on the pr- concepts that you were taught at the yeah. seminar treat them like a teacher and commit to their teaching yeah I mean, and, and sometimes you'll go to seminars where the the main thing is like drills and stuff. Yeah. But so those are the ones where you're just maybe taking note of what the drills were and maybe trying to implement yeah. them and try them. But yeah. if they're teaching you specific points about your, especially if you get personalized coaching where they're like, hey, this is specifically what you are doing wrong. You should work on this. Um, yeah, you know, heed that. To, to watch teachers, uh, I've seen I've seen instructors who will look at students, you know, a, a couple years, uh, they, they, maybe they have a repeat seminar and they'll look at a student and they'll be like, oh man, you looked better last year. That's <laughs> so messed up. But but it's good to know that, you know, they care and that they're giving they're giving things that they want you to continue to work yeah, on. Yeah, the positive thing is that they're watching you. Yeah. Believe it or not, these, these senseis, they care about their art. They spent their whole life doing it. Yeah. This is what they are and they want their art to survive. Yeah. They're constantly looking for good people to, to give more information to to help them progress in their own content. Yeah. At a certain point, it's not about how do I maintain my karate empire. It becomes how do I maintain the art? Yeah. How do I continue this art and, and have it progress and not not take a big leap backwards? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, So I wonder, like, for me, I love an informational seminar. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to go do. I'm Mm -hmm. going to go for one of them. I don't really go for much else. Yeah. Um, I don't like going to camps. I have five or six uh, senseis there, stuff like that, where it's this rah, 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 train, 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 hard training. Oh, gosh, no. I don't don't like it. I don't care for it. Yeah. You know? But I I still like my content. I train. Yeah. It's just I'm not going to wear myself out silly. Yeah doing a thousand push a thousand uh, stepping punches or something you know yeah it's not that's just ridiculous i'm not 20 anymore i don't need to do that yeah and that's kind of the way we look at seminars anyway is like we we, for us they're they're informative they're not for us to go and wear ourselves into the ground if we wanted to do that we could do that at our own dojo yeah well i'll just uh i'll kind of share my my approach to steve ubel's seminars when i first started going Uh um after that first seminar i i (laughs) <laughs> I foolishly told myself that I would go to every one I could possibly make. And... <coughs> <coughs> Coronavirus! Sorry. No. Um, allergies. We have a <laughs> heck of a lot of pollen out here, and I work outside. And to make it stick, I foolishly told Steve. Oh, yeah? I said, hey, Steve, I, I know this doesn't mean anything to you, but it means a lot to me. Um, I'm going to try to make every every seminar you have in this side of the, the country and if i can drive to it within eight hours i'm going mm-hmm. and he's like yeah 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 and then the next seminar he's in the southeast i show up mm-hmm. hey steve how you doing mm-hmm. good to see you again next one again i mean it was like for two two years almost every six months i was mm-hmm. traveling to train somewhere near him or, or go with train with him mm-hmm. and i'd never missed the opportunity to ask a question one-on-one so if he, he got there early or if we passed in the hallway, I would try to get his attention and say, hey, I've been working on this and, and I can't get that or this doesn't feel right. Am I am I experiencing what I think I'm experiencing? Am I right or wrong? Mm-hmm. And being honest with these teachers and just saying, hey, this is what I'm doing and I'm trying to get better at it. I Man, I think it's the smartest thing to do when you're going to seminars, you yeah. know, and, and trying to create that connection, not for your own financial gain but to better your art you know i think it's better to to have those personal um relationships and i think the best way to do it nowadays is through seminars i mean that's i mean that's the only way you get exposed anymore right well i mean there's lots of ways to get exposed but there's that's the best way to build a relationship with at least start to build a relationship with someone that you probably wouldn't be able to see otherwise unless you made an effort to go train with them right and i'm coming from a perspective where you know, I was the only only black belt in my dojo. Uh-huh. I was running it by myself. Yeah. I mean, it basically, you know, you're when you're on an island, dude, you find as many ways as possible to get off it. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And it makes you <laughs> wonder a lot more, like, why aren't there more adults doing this? But maybe nah, one day. I don't. I just, I just accept it. That's not for everybody. Yeah. That's true. But, um... 
I'm sorry, I lost my thought. Okay. What you been working on? Um, I've been working on the end portion of Sochin. Mm. So I was working on not bobbing up and down. Mm. And then working on not over rotating my foot. I think I mentioned this in the last podcast we did. Um, yeah. I also forgot that on the um, on the very last section where you do the two inside blocks in place facing the front. So left hand inside block, right hand inside block, and then or whatever. I might have those backwards. Mm. And then you pull your right hand back to your chest. Uh, I keep like doing weird things with my arm, <laughs> so I'm trying to get my arm in the right spot. So it's like dumb position stuff, but like I said, Sochin is this, just this like weird kata to me that I feel like I just can't get a grasp of. So still trying to solidify that fudadachi and get my hands in the right spot and not bob up and down like a rubber ducky and all that kind of stuff. What are you working on? Uh, this past week, I tweaked my back working at work. And oh, yeah. basically, I haven't done nothing but stretch, lay on my back, try mm-hmm. to get it out of there. I'm... So the answer is that you're working on flexibility. I am working on trying not to break my back in half. <laughs> True that. <laughs> trying to stay healthy. So yeah, that's what I worked on. I mean, for real, guys, if you've been training for years and you don't know how to keep your body good to go, you need to learn, or you're not gonna you're gonna have hip issues and elbow issues, shoulder issues. Not elbow issues. I'm sorry, hip and knee. You could have an elbow issue. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, hip elbow. and knee issues. And, that's from and that's from lasso issues. and people. <laughs> Guys, it, I mean, honestly, you gotta listen to your body. and You gotta take time off. I know it doesn't sound like it sounds almost sacrilegious to say, coming from the generation I did, that you don't train. Yeah. That that there's a reason not to train, but there is, you know, and that's self preservation. Yeah. So. Or at least scaling it back some on certain yeah. days, just make keeping it light and all that kind of stuff. So on a personal note, um, Lauren had said that we had met in 2011. Yep. That was not a romantic meeting. That was, <laughs> no, it that, was that was like, hey, how you doing? Let me explain the conversation we had. Oh, whatever. This is a great conversation. See, I don't remember this at all, so I think it's, he's making this, is, this up. I remember it because she was being a, a little, you know. Whatever, okay. South Sumter Princess. That's what she was. Um. She, I said, I looked up to her and I said, how you doing? And she's like, hey, how you doing? I was like, cool, this and that. And I said, I'm sorry, I really don't want to be in your shoes. And she was like, what do you mean? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I started out, I said, can I, um, can I offer some advice on something we were doing? I think it was like Steve had told me something and, and it was almost the exact thing she was doing. I was trying to help her. And she immediately was like, gave me the look, like, Get, get away from me. I don't want to listen to another guy tell me what to do or how to do it. Um, although she didn't say that, she gave me that look. I did not give him that right. look. When I got that look, this is what I said. I said, I'm sorry that you're in that situation where everybody's vicariously living through you. All the old dojo men are living through you because you're a young black belt that has talent. I get it, and I'm sorry. And that was offensive. I do remember that part. Not offensive now because he was right. <laughs> And I was just, and I just being honest with the girl because I, I know that I experienced that, and she, yeah, she didn't like it what I had to say, so she kind of gave me that that smug like, walk away. Gave me, stank eye. Well, not stank eye. She it wasn't rude at all. It was kind of crazy. She just was like, yeah, I don't even want to talk to you, and just walked away. <laughs> didn't say that. Yeah. Uh, plus, <laughs> oh, plus I, I had mentioned that one of the girls that she had t- tested black belt for. I kind of made a joke about it because she came to the dojo one time in Ocala. One of the girls that I tested with. Yeah, black belt. and and she did. Uh, we did a class together, and she never showed back up. And I, and my joke was, I guess the class was too hard for her to come back. How and, would you expect <laughs> me to take that well? <laughs> and she took it like I was just, you know, a jerk because we used to train her dojo. We used to train really hard. I was like, "Are you kidding me right now? You freaking arrogant jerk!" <laughs> I was degrading her dojo on her. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I don't really remember this whole encounter very well, but I know that it happened, and that's where we met, because he kind of started to come down all the way to train, down to where we are to train yeah, with Yeah, I trained in Bushnell, because well, I met Sam Jaquinta then, and um, and Les Nice and all those guys, and asked if I could come down and train on occasion, because I was the only adult black belt in Ocala that was at the dojo, so um, that's how it worked out. I ended up working on uh, training on Saturdays with... Uh, Jesus criminy. Glenn. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, I I had his face on my my, my head. And I just, <laughs> oh that's my why God. I said Jesus criminy. I was like, I know this guy is, you know, uh, Glenn. Yeah. And and that's how we kind of trained from there. That 
it was the beginning of our like training friendship, our karate friendship. I mm-hmm. thought was training with Glenn on Saturdays. Yeah, I thought that was like you know cool high kind of thing. And it all started because of a seminar. So just so you know, you might meet your significant other at a seminar, and you might not like them at first, but yeah. it's okay. It's You'll okay. get through it. <laughs> I grow on you. Yeah, like, like a, a vine, like a leech, like a vine on a tree, like sucking a the life out of you, bacteria <laughs> or a fungus, choking you. <laughs> yeah, we made it through here. Okay, well, you guys go to a seminar sometime. Oh wait, you can't go to a seminar. Yeah. Seminar anytime soon, but maybe once all of this is over, you will be able to experience these lovely things that we have spoken of today. <laughs> uh, it's all over the place. Anyways, a seminar. Well, whatever it's our conversation that's what we do anyways whatever okay well you guys uh stay safe wash your hands don't pick your nose don't pick your nose and eat it anything like that we have kids that do that it's gross i had to call a kid out on on zoom the other day i'm like get your fingers out your nose (laughs) (laughs) bye guys Bye.